Yeah, good morning. Uh, I'd like to welcome members to the 13th meeting of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee. Apologies have been received from the convener, John Scott, and I'd like to welcome Annie Wells, uh, who is attending today uh, as a substitute for John Scott. Um, as it is uh, Annie Wells' first meeting of this committee, I invite Annie Wells, in accordance with Section 3 of the Code of Conduct, to declare any relevant interests. I have no relevant interests to this committee, hmm. and I refer people to my register of interests. Thank you very much. Okay, agenda item number two is a consideration of instruments subject to the negative procedure. Um, the first of these instruments is the Asset Transfer Request Procedure Scotland Regulations 2016, SSI 2016-357. The meaning of Regulations 12 and 13 could be clearer in the following respects. Regulation 13-1 uh, could be made clearer to clearly give effect to the policy intention that there may be one or more contact addresses determined in accordance with this regulation. Regulations 12 and 13 could be made clearer to clearly give effect to the policy intention that when a community transfer body sends an electronic communication from an address other than a contact address or addresses contained in an asset transfer request, or as subsequently notified in accordance with Regulation 13.2, that does not alter the contact address or addresses. On account of this lack of clarity, does the committee agree to draw the instrument to the attention of the Parliament on reporting ground H? And does the committee also agree to call on the Scottish Government to lay an amending instrument to improve the clarity of Regulations 12 and 13 and for that amending instrument to take effect timorously for these regulations coming to force on the 23rd of January 2017? Uh, <clears throat> instrument number two is the Asset Transfer Request Review Procedure Scotland Regulations 2016 SSI 2016-358. The meaning of the regulations could be made clearer in the following respects. Regulation 12.1 could be made clearer to clearly give effect to the policy intention that there is no requirement for the Scottish Ministers to appoint a member of their own staff to a review panel. Uh, secondly, review uh, so Regulation 18.1 could be made clearer to clearly give effect to the policy intention that there may be one or more contact addresses determined in accordance with this regulation. And thirdly, Regulations 18 and 19 could be made clearer to clearly give effect to the policy intention that when a community transfer body sends an electronic communication from an address other than a contact address or addresses contained in the application for review, uh, or are subsequently notified in accordance with Regulation 18.2, that does not alter the contact address or addresses. Does the Committee agree to draw the instrument to the, the attention of Parliament on reporting ground H on account of this lack of clarity? Okay. And there is also a drafting error in Regulation 18.2. Uh, the reference to the Scottish Ministers should be a reference to the relevant body. And for that reason, does the committee agree to report the instrument under the general reporting ground two? And the Scottish Government has undertaken to rectify regulations 12.1 and 18.2 by laying an amending instrument. This would take effect timorously for these regulations coming to force on the 23rd of January 2017. In light of the undertaking uh, to lay an amending instrument, does the committee agree to call on the Scottish Government to include in that instrument provision to improve the clarity of Regulation 18.1 and Regulations 18 and 19 taken together. Uh, the third instrument is the Asset Transfer Request Appeals Scotland Regulations 2016, SSI 2016-359. Regulation 16.1 could be made clearer to clearly give effect to the policy intention that there may be one or more contact addresses determined in accordance with this regulation. Regulations 16 and 17 could be made clearer to clearly give effect to the policy intention that when a community transfer body sends an electronic communication from an address other than a contact address or addresses contained in a notice of appeal or are subsequently notified in accordance with Regulation 16.2, that does not alter the contact address or addresses. Does the committee agree to draw the instrument to the attention of the Parliament 
on reporting ground H for lack of clarity for the aforementioned reasons. And does the committee also agree to call on the Scottish Government to lay an amending instrument which would improve the clarity uh, of regulations 16 and 17 and for that amending instrument to take effect timidly for these regulations coming to force on the 23rd of January 2017. Uh, instrument number four is the asset transfer request appeal where no contact concluded. Uh, Scotland Regulations 2016, SSI 2016-360. Regulation 5.1 uh, could be made clearer to clearly give effect to the policy intention that there is no requirement for the Scottish Ministers to appoint a member of their own staff to a review panel. Regulation 18.1 uh, could be made clearer to clearly give effect to the policy intention that there may be one or more contact addresses determined in accordance with this regulation. And regulations 18 and 19 could be made clearer to clearly give effect to the policy intention that when a community transfer body sends an electronic communication uh, from an address other than a contact address or addresses contained in a notice of appeal or application, or as subsequently notified in accordance with regulation 18.2, that does not alter the contact address or addresses. Does the committee agree to draw the instrument to the attention of the Parliament on reporting ground H in light of this lack of clarity? And there is a drafting error in Rule 4 to A in the schedule. The reference to notice in writing from the review panel person should omit person. With that in mind, does the committee agree to draw the instrument to the attention of the Parliament on the general reporting ground. And the Scottish Government has undertaken to rectify the above matters, apart from in relation to Regulations 18 and 19, by laying an amending instrument. This would take effect timidly for these regulations coming to force on the 23rd of January 2017. In light of the undertaking to lay an amending instrument, does the Committee agree to call on the Scottish Government to include in that instrument a provision to improve the clarity of Regulations 18 and 19? And the fifth instrument is the Community Empowerment Registers of Land, Scotland, Regulations 2016, SSI 2016-362. Uh, there is an anomaly in relation to the numbering of subparagraph D and the sub subparagraphs I, oh, sorry, 1 and 2 of Regulation 2-1. Subparagraphs uh, 1 and 2 should be included under a separate subparagraph E with a numbering in the remaining subparagraphs in Regulation 2 1 updated accordingly. Given this anomaly, does the Committee agree to draw the instrument to the attention of the Parliament on reporting ground H uh, in respect uh, <coughs> in respect oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, that the form uh, of the regulation could be clearer? Uh, the regulations also contain the following drafting errors. Uh, first of all, subparagraph G of Regulation 2.1 incorrectly refers to the Police and Fire Scotland Act 2012, when it should refer to the Police and Fire Reform Scotland Act 2012. And secondly, similarly, subparagraph 1 of Regulation 2.1 incorrectly refers to the Land Registration Scotland Act 2012, when it should refer to the Land Registration Etc. Scotland Act 2012. On account of these errors, does the Committee agree to draw the regulations to the attention of the Parliament on the general reporting ground? And does the Committee agree to welcome the undertaking by the Scottish Government to lay a further instrument to clarify the provisions in respect of all three of these points to take effect before the regulations come into force on the 23rd of January 2017? The sixth uh, instrument is the Land Reform Scotland Act 2016, Consequential and Savings Provisions, Regulations 2016, SSI 2016-366. In the circumstances where an estate of a deceased person contains two or more interests as tenant under a lease of an agricultural tenancy, the saving provision in Regulation 3.1c and 2 could implement more clearly the policy intention that applies only in respect of an interest or interests uh, that have not been bequeathed by will or other testamentary writing, even though 
there may be a request of another interest or interests. Accordingly, does the committee agree to draw the regulations to the attention of the Parliament on reporting ground H, as the meaning of regulations 3, 1, C and 2 could be clearer? And does the committee agree to welcome the Scottish Government's urgent laying of a further instrument to clarify the provisions? Uh, no points have been raised by legal advisers on the following instruments. The Air Quality Standards Scotland Amendment Regulations 2016, SSI 2016-376. The Land Reform Scotland Act 2016, Consequential and Saving Provisions Amendment Regulations 2016, SSI 2016-389. Uh, is the committee content with these instruments? Yes. Okay. Agenda item number three. Uh, is the consideration of instruments not subject to any parliamentary procedure. No points have been raised by legal advisers on the following instruments. The Community Empowerment Scotland Act 2015, Commencement Number 4 and Transitory P Provision, Order 2016, SSI 2016-363, and Inquiries into Fatal Accidents and Sudden Deaths, etc., Scotland Act 2016, Commencement Number 2, Transitional and Transit Transitory Provision, Regulations 2016, SSI 2016-370. Is the committee content with these instruments? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, well, our next meeting uh, will be on Tuesday, the 6th of December, when we will again consider SSIs. And with that, I close today's meeting. Thank you. Thank you.